for the show. We're sitting for the show? Okay. I love it. Okay, we should be going on. Hold on. Here we go. I don't know if we're on. Okay. Hey, everybody. You're here at WJZZ Cool TV, Get Down and Dirty Talking Art. And I'm Debbie LaPrat, the artist, and my co-host this evening, Colibri. The artist is not here. She's uh, just took a sabbatical this evening, but I have my wonderful guests. I have Mr. Jamie. Feldman. Feldman, who is a famous photographer, and he has a really unique history. So go for it, Jamie. <laughs> and oh, you're also watching WJZZ Cool Jazz TV. Watch us on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and like, share, and comment. And this evening, if you guys would like to uh, call in, we would really appreciate it. And I'm sorry, I don't know the number. Maybe they can put it up on the screen. So if any of our guests would like to call in and talk, actually have questions for Jamie, and please comment in the comment box, and please uh, share. So go for it, Jamie. So okay. welcome. We're just well, thank you. Of, it's a pleasure here. to be here. Thank you. Are you excited? Quite an honor. I um, and I guess I, I'm constantly told that I do have a unique background for being a photographer. Okay, and that is? And that is that I, well, I was into all kinds of art. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a family of musicians. Okay, that's very cool. And Did you grow up here in the city or in the area? I grew up in Detroit. Okay. So uh, I was told, I was born here. Okay. Grew up, well, I don't know that I've grown up. I was raised in Detroit. Right. Okay, okay, yeah. But, um... It's been, uh, but everybody was into music in my family. Well, my mother taught dance. Well, that's so neat. That's and neat. everyone else were musicians, but I wasn't very good. <laughs> so but somebody's got to be the audience. That's right. So you couldn't do the shuffle step. <laughs> but when my father saw me draw, actually drawing a picture of my brother playing the violin, ah. he started to kind of nurturing that. Okay. About what age did you start your drawing? I don't remember. That was about four or five years old. Okay, that's very cool. That's cool. Um, and then I went on from that. When when I was six, the family says, I don't really remember this. Right. That That's when I got my first camera. Okay, really? But the, the story goes, my father coveted a more expensive camera for himself. Uh -huh. So he bought me an inexpensive one, basically to keep my hands off his. Oh, uh, that's, that's a good <laughs> thing. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it backfired on him, though. Why? Would you do steal the good one? No, I started really getting into it. Uh -huh. The more pictures that back then, you had to process the photos. Right. Did you do the developing? So, well, not yet. Not until I was about 11, 12 years old. Did you have a dark room at the house? And then I got built a dark room. Okay. Uh, in junior high, I was already winning. I won some awards. Oh, that's very cool. So, being the supportive parents, they, you know, kind of kept it going. Okay. By the time I got into high school, and I was photo editor for the yearbook in the newspaper, okay, he actually gave me that camera that he. Oh, so he's going to let you use the camera now. Yeah. Well, you... now I was, as he said, you're taking better pictures than I am. So take. Wow. But I have a strong art background. Mm -hmm. So even before that, I was going to art. I went to. My summers were mostly spent at Interlochen okay. as an art major. Okay. I didn't know they had art. I just thought it was music up there. No. It's, oh, they had a very okay. strong art department. I didn't know that. Um, I don't know this for a fact, but I was actually told that I was responsible for them now getting a whole photography department. That's very cool. Um, I was, so what would happen was I was up there as a student mm -hmm. first, a camper, and all the way through high school division. Then I went back as a counselor. Wow, that's very cool. And as a counselor... I had my kids would get, and I like the younger boys' right, right. cabin. They would um, get thing when we get the mail, like after lunch, mm -hmm. and we get any photos that they submitted to be processed. Okay. They had little accounts. And I'd look at these photos, and I'd say, uh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> so we actually started discussing it, mm -hmm. and they loved it. What How to take kids? better pictures. With your, ki your kids? With the or? kids in the cabin. Oh, the kids in the cabin. In, okay. At camp. Okay, okay. Then the camp allowed me, they gave me space and allowed me to bring darkroom stuff up. Oh, that's cool. So as a, so a couple years as counselor, 
I started getting a bigger and bigger crowd for this kind of spontaneous photography right, right, class. Right, right, right. And eventually, I left. Didn't know anything about that. I went on when I was in college and and such. Where I did didn't you go to college. At? Well, I went to Wayne. Okay. Undergrad, and I was still. That's when I was still a counselor at Summers. But then okay. I went on to dental school. Okay. And that what was made at you go Marquette. to dental school, not going to the arts. Actually, it was the arts. The, okay. But I was fascinated by the human body mm -hmm. and and facial structures okay. and things. Okay. And a friend of ours who was an orthodontist. Okay. I had a meeting, and he said, "That's right around the corner from my office. Come on up, and I'll take you to lunch." Cool. Well, not one to pass up a free lunch. Well, of course not. Me too. <laughs> um, this is when I was in high school. Right. And he was showing me before and afters and what he did and the x-rays. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and I was actually taking a class then. And I, I took classes down here. I was taking it. Well, it was now College for Creative Studies. Right. Back then, way back then, it was um, Arts and Crafts. Society of Detroit oh, or I something like that. that. Okay, okay. First, then it became the Center for Creative Studies yes. and now the College for Creative oh, Studies. Okay, okay, right. But that's where I was taking classes on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. and there's Along with a, the college classes or high school? I was started even before I was in high I was in middle school. Oh, right? okay. And I thought I was with all these adults, but they were just college age. They yeah. They, but I was like 11 when I started there, 12. Right. And because two of my teachers at Interlochen mm -hmm. taught, they did that during the summer, but they were down here during the winter. Okay. They set the curriculum up. That's cool. And that's how I kind of got into all the different media that I would take. That's very cool. But eventually, photography became one of them. Okay. That's neat. I did it in school, in high school. And then when I went to college, I actually got a job in a f photography studio. <laughs> then when I went to dental school, which dental school did you go to? I went to Marquette University in Wisconsin. Oh, oh okay, okay. And at Marquette, I actually applied and got a grant in medical photography and illustration. So how, what is that like? What is explain to everybody? What I don't have any idea. Well, medical about. photography is basically taking pictures of patients mm -hmm. during. I mean, it could be during surgery or during procedures, kind of before and afters. Okay. Like if you're, you're going to do like reconstruction or something But it like could that. be copying, taking pictures of x-rays okay. and, and setting things up. It could be for journals. Okay. Submitting articles mm -hmm. and have the accompanying pictures. Right. It could be for teaching. Okay. That's really cool. I didn't know that. And that is where one of our teachers, the pathology professor, mm -hmm was kind of bad-mouthing photography oh, really? and apologizing almost in her lecture that photography just doesn't show you what you want. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting back there. Now, this That's is when you were in dental school? When I was in dental school. Okay. I was actually in taking pathology. Right. And during the lecture, she's talking against, talking about, against photography. So how'd that make you feel? And I'm sitting there. Well, that's because you're not lighting it correctly. <laughs> oh, you got the technical. I didn't say it. I knew it exactly. Right. I mean, as soon as she right. saw it, why? Right. Right. I actually knew it before she said that. Right. And that's why cool. you weren't able, we weren't able to see things well. Right. So that was when I was writing the grant proposal. Mm -hmm. It took, you so know, like three or four for? weeks. The grant was for medical uh, photography and illustration. Okay. And what you do, I mean, I did do some research with it, mm -hmm. but I also put two big names in it. Mm -hmm. Hers was one. She was the county medical examiner. Oh, wow. Okay. And she was a physician, but a pathologist, and right. she was teaching right. us pathology. Right. The other guy that I had in there that I started taking pictures for, almost by accident, mm -hmm. started like one in the morning, but that's another After story. After the party. No, it actually was after work because they helicopter. He was one of the top pediatric thoracic surgeons in the world. No, thoracic is? Chest. Chest, okay. They had an infant, hours old, that had a congenital heart defect. Mm -hmm. They helicoptered him, him in. in. Okay. And they went right to surgery. Mm -hmm. But there was snow. This is Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. You snow. got a little bit of snow up there. So the team came in, but they were, and he was pacing the floors. I actually did the blood work and okay. some workup because I, yeah. I worked yeah. in the lab. Right. 
the the woman on blood gases was the one that was taking her couldn't get in fast enough. Okay. So, so I said, I'll take care of the blood gases and so you can get started. And he right. said, great. So within 10 minutes, she was there. Right. But he wanted pictures once he got in there. So I was still there. Nobody around to take pictures. So I said, well, I'm familiar with the camera. I can take some <coughs> pictures for you. And then he loved it. So I started taking more and more pictures for him. So when you're taking the photos, do you have to like cover the camera to make sure it doesn't, you know, um, you just don't touch anything. I'm scrubbed right. in gown and everything. Right, right, right. The camera's separate. I okay. mean, we do things differently, a little bit differently now right. than we did back then. Right. Um, in fact, during lockdown and COVID, I was teaching Zoom classes to surgical residents Neat. across the country. That's cool. So it's a, but it's very different. It's very standardized mm -hmm. compared. We don't want the artistic okay. view in there. Okay, you want just the... And how to make sure there's no distortion of the face, for example. Okay. Like okay. for before and after. So then from there you went? So from there I went, and I always used it in my practice, mm -hmm. photography. So you started your own practice, and what did you do in your practice? Well, I did max. I went in, went on, after dental school, went to, did my medicine at University of Pittsburgh. Okay, and what is that? And ma oral maxillofacial surgery. Okay, so you were like a surgeon. Is yeah. that putting people's faces back together? Yeah, if they were apart, but also, you know, reconstructive surgery, okay. but it could be anything from taking out wisdom teeth to okay. car accidents to okay. orthognathic surgery. Like, instead of just moving the teeth like an orthodontist does, right. I'd move, reposition the, the jaws. Wow. Okay. So, but I was always fascinated, but that was the art that got me into faces, okay. literally. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. So it's kind of an unusual approach, mm -hmm. but while there... Facial bones are very difficult to read radiographically. Why is that? Because there's just so many layers. Okay. And they're kind of on top of each other, small bones. I just had this natural, partially because of my art, I was very good at spatial relationships. And what does that mean? In the surgery. Like knowing where things are in relation to each other. Okay. In space. All right. But I could see, I kind of knew things on the x-ray because it's just a shadow, how mm -hmm. to put it together. Right. Yes. So I was working a lot with the radiology department. They needed somebody to help, and I started helping studying MRIs and CAT scans. Right, because that was a new technology. That was the technology. Right. And that's when I started, what that is, is more digital. Yes, it is. We're not taking pictures with that, mm -hmm. even they call it imaging. Right. But we're actually collecting data, right. interpreting that with software. Right. Now, flash ahead when we ended up with digital cameras mm -hmm. years later, those digital cameras, we don't take pictures with a digital camera. Right. Somebody said there was something about that you're... We was, are just taking, we're collecting data. That's what it was. You're collecting data. On the digital. And then that has to be interpreted by software. Right. So we're, it's more of a computer that in our hands. Right, right. I don't usually let the camera dictate. I do it on more sophisticated software on my computer. Okay. And put those things together, just like we did with medical imaging. Okay. So you're able to combine both and both together. Both together. But it gives me a huge advantage mm -hmm. because I'm not taking a picture. I take all that data. I put the data together. And then I will create the image. For example, in this little area that we're in. We have some darker areas and we have some very bright lights. Should well, we bring up one of your photos? Maybe you could explain that? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you bring up one of his photos? Oh, we're going to take a break. Hold on a minute. You're watching WJZZ Cool Jazz TV. Get down and dirty talking art. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'm Debbie LaPrat, the artist, and my co-host Calibri is taking a sabbatical this evening, and we have this wonderful, wonderful photographer, Mr. Jamie. So go for it. And if you guys can put up a, one of his photos, we don't care which one. Would be great. There we go. Okay. Hold on. So there it's up. Okay. So you want to give it a brief little what this guy is about? And yeah, well, about what, this, what this picture is, is the Belle Isle Bridge when our just relatively recently when our, kind of the end of our, our last snowstorm right right <laughs> and there was still ice flow on the Detroit River that's really a powerful picture and there is still snow in the air there right and it's very subtle but at the end of the bridge you can even see the American flag mm -hmm. 
full out because it was we were having about 30 mile an hour winds right, at the time. Right, so it going straight out. So it's a little harder to see unless it's large. Right. Um, this picture, it happens to be at the moment on exhibit at the uh, in Monroe. Okay. At the um, Raisin River oh, National cool. Battlefield okay. Park okay. In, the, in the visitor center. That's very cool. So when, what time of the day was this? This was in the morning. Okay. When do you find? But not too early. It was take, about ten o'clock. Take photographs. It really morning, depends on day or the evening. So what it is, and it's about the light. Okay. I'll use the light that I have. Right. A lot of photographers say, "Well, you can't shoot in the daytime. You want the golden hour, even mm -hmm. like what in is the it? morning." People don't know what the golden hour the, is. Yeah, the golden hour is pretty much about an hour after sunrise. Okay. So why and an hour before the, sunset. Right, why would they call it the golden hour? Because the light is softer then okay. as a setting, and it's kind of a golden orange, okay. a yellowy orange. And how about like when the sun rising? Same thing. I mean, it's the same in other thing. words, because it goes through the atmosphere a little different, right. you know, at that right. steep right. angle. Okay. So it softens the light. Ah, it's almost like a filter. So it's a little bit like a filter, and softer light, is nice for a lot of things. You don't have this harsher shadow. Okay. So it you can almost see things differently. Okay. So I am kind of into whatever light is there. Mm -hmm. But there are plenty of times when I'll say, I have to come back in the morning or I have to okay. come back tonight because okay. maybe because of where the light is and how to get it. I will often use the light mm -hmm. in the middle of the day. I am kind of known now among photographers is using shadows, okay. using reflections, using starbursts. If the sun is there, I'll take it and create a starburst That's to cool. give more interest to the photo. Okay. Um, so if you guys got any questions, just uh, put it in the chat or mm -hmm. uh, give us a call. I don't know the number. I Sorry, everybody. But please chat if you guys want to add any questions for uh, Jamie. Okay, so go ahead. So one, some, one of the other pictures probably have a more. Now, that, the bridge, mm -hmm. because it was very soft light and it was pretty cloudy. Right. It was snowing, actually, yeah. at the time. The light was what we call flat. Now, why is that, called, why is that flat? Because it wasn't extreme dimension. It didn't have real brights and real darks. Okay. So you don't have harsh shadows. Mm -hmm. It's kind of softer. Okay. So it's kind of nice for a bridge because you can get the detail of those textures mm -hmm. and things. And I also, the, where the light was, it was over the island. I was actually on the Detroit side okay. of the yeah. river. By having light go at an angle to something, when it kind of, the sky brightened just a little bit, it never really, not the, the sun burst through, but it kind of brightened. Right, right. It shows texture better when it comes at an angle. Okay. So I get more detail and texture in the bridge. That's interesting. That's so interesting. it's knowing how to light it. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple, there's another one there that. You guys I, want to put up another photo? Come on. Ah. Uh, uh, now that, here's, on, here's an one. example of me. This is actually at sunset. Oh, okay. And it's an example of using earlier. I was with some other, everyone was complaining that it was raining in the afternoon. Mm hmm but we wanted to see if, well, maybe it'll clear enough. And it did start clearing right about sunset. Okay. But now the good news- where is this photo at? This is at? actually on Lake Michigan. Okay. Um, is that one of, that's one of our lighthouses. And one of the lighthouses. And which lighthouse and is that? And that's at, uh, this one is in- um, I know it, Is this I Muskegon? Can't. No, it's- um, Muskegon I thought was red. No, yeah, Muskegon I think is red. I can't, um, um, I'm blanking out right now. Is that, is that I go to so many different lighthouses. Right, 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 right. I know a lot of them. Is that something um, but it's a beautiful photo. The color and the wake up, like the, mm -hmm. the um, like is that the sunset back there? And if you can see the way at the, the end, there's actually a bird okay. sitting on the end that just is highlighted by the orange. Uh -huh. But the interesting thing was that rain that we had in the afternoon left a nice big puddle there. So What's that's where I got the, ref where? I'm using the reflection. Where I'm actually on the the deck of the break wall. Oh, okay. And you can see the reflection. Uh-huh. So that reflection is a big advantage. So you can, it, it just makes it more interesting. Okay, that's really it, interesting. So adding the interest makes it, okay. the whole picture pop a little bit more. Wow, that's really cool. Now when you do your photos, do you go home and do you, um, like put them on the computer and, 
adjust them or anything like that? Or yeah, well, you... what I do is because I, cr I use raw data. Okay, the so data what, that the camera collects. That. What is I'm going to okay. explain it. The camera collects data. Right. And let's say you're using your cell phone or something, yes. and you see a little picture on the back. Right. That's, that's not really the picture you take. But if you produce a JPEG, mm -hmm. which I think most people would know a JPEG, right. that data goes to a little computer chip in the camera. Mm -hmm. There's software embedded in that computer chip. The okay. algorithms, which were created by somebody in Japan, uh -huh. and she never saw, or he never saw what you're shooting. It's algorithms to kind of give a good ballpark of what the picture is, but not exactly. I may want to see what's in those darker corners more mm -hmm. than I want to see what's in the brighter, or so, why so I can shift that? it. Well, because I, I know what I want to emphasize. I want to tell the story okay. for my viewer. All right. Okay. And how I adjust that. Okay. Now, when I process that, and we'll get to that in just a second, but as I'm processing that, <clears throat> I'm interpreting, I take all the data. When you take a JPEG, mm -hmm. the camera throws away part of that data. Why do they do that? Why does it do it's that? Not, it says it doesn't, it thinks it doesn't need it. Okay. Do you need, does it need it? But I need it because I want all that data. Okay. In fact, I will How often take save three. save all that data? Well, I'll save it. On a hard drive. Okay. In, in a data file. Okay. And that data file, then I can interpret with my software. But I may take two or th three or four or five pictures, put them together in a data file, all that data. All right. So I can do different exposures. So would you kind of layer the pictures? They're not really layered. They're all integrated. Well, what's the difference between layering and integrating? Well, one layer would be on top of each other. Right. I create just a whole file of all the data. Okay. And that data will have the an exposure for the bright lights mm -hmm. and an exposure for the dark shadows. Oh, okay. So when I <laughs> work on it, I can adjust that. Okay. Now, Are you I doing also, that all on your computer? Can or I do, do that, that on, on the computer? Your... Okay. No, you can't. You can do some of that. But okay. The, but the camera, this, I'd rather do it myself. Okay. And have more control. Okay. So when you do that, and I'm, I'm doing that. I also understand the human physiology of the of vision. Mm -hmm. How we see. Right. We don't see like a camera does. Right. Somebody else said that. Yeah. Your eye scans. Mm -hmm. So you see something dark. Your eyes can open up, let more light in so you can right. see it better. You go over here. You go over here. But you're going to, whatever kind of tweaks your fancy is what you're going to focus on. Okay and not everything around it. All right. So I will do that in my processing, what I want that viewer to see and what I want them to focus on. But wow. it's just like a painter. Right. If the you're painting, point. here's your subject. Oh. Right. And how I add different components to it. Right. I may not want very bright objects in the background yeah. because that distracts. I want to get rid of those distractions. So how long would you work on, let's say, that, that piece of art? You know, that piece, I mean, is it hours? Is it days? Is it just depends on the photo? It's usually minutes. Okay. Uh, for most things, I okay. do shoot a lot of events. Mm -hmm. And I may come home with a thousand photos. Right. And I'm not going to spend hours no, on each one. No, no, <laughs> um, But there's ways, but because it's digital, I can do one. Mm -hmm. And this is same lighting. I can boom. I can actually apply some of the same things through different photos. That's interesting. That's, um, that's nothing special. I mean, a lot of people are, right. are able to right. do that, not right. a lot of photographers. Right. Um, I do use pretty much standard Lightroom, okay. mainly because it also organizes my photos better than any other program out there right now. Right. And then Photoshop, but I don't, most photos don't even make it to Photoshop. Okay, what do you do, delete them out? No, I don't delete them. Okay. I just don't need, people think, well, that was Photoshopped. Lightroom is actually more specific for photography okay. than Photoshop is. But that's, that's, a, that's a program, right? It's a program. Okay. But it also allows, has things that like Photoshop doesn't, for like, for example, the organization. 
So I have pictures for an international organization, for example, mm -hmm. thousands of pictures. They may call me from, somebody called from France, they have an article, do you have some pictures that can go with this? Mm -hmm. Before we were off the phone, Lightroom found a dozen pictures for that were oh, applicable. Oh, okay, so it's like a storage place. So it's storage, but a, yeah. data, a database. Okay. So we can, because it's all data. That's so deep. It's like, in, okay. in medicine, we can do things with digital that we couldn't do with film. I know. Oh, if wow. I had a lesion, mm -hmm. somebody, let's say, just on the, on the hand. But to explain to people, some people might not know what a lesion is. A lesion, is. just a, a sore, some kind of a, a growth or okay, something, or a tumor, something. Or, you know, yeah. like an ulcer or something. Okay. But you're not exactly sure, but oftentimes the doctor would say, well, let's see what it looks like in two weeks. Right. See how it changes. Right. That's a, a significant tip to what it may be doing. Right. Well, before we take pictures, we would just write notes in about it or try to remember some of it, but mm -hmm. it's, but you didn't know if it was red, mm -hmm. but what shade of red? Uh. You couldn't compare. Some gets darker, some's getting brighter. We couldn't tell, and it depended so very, the variable was the, the light in the room and, and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. However, with digital, mm -hmm. I can capture a digital lighting environment for what I did the first time, use that same lighting environment two weeks later for the pictures so that I can make a valid comparison between the colors. That's pretty deep. Okay. Now that's in medical. And, that's in medical. Yeah. That's and or but you may but product, like if someone designs a shirt, mm -hmm. they in a particular color they want that shirt. Mm -hmm. So you have to calibrate your computer and everything, okay. and all the way through to make sure that color is what ends up in the magazine ad. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's pretty. Uh, that's because pretty it heavy. could be. It's not just red. Right. 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 Think of how many red lipsticks there are. Right. Oh, gotcha. You know, there's so many shades of red and so many, you know, right. depends on a lot of that stuff. So, and then you use that. But I use some of the same techniques I learned in art, mm -hmm. in my photography. How to bring out certain colors and how to sequence them mm -hmm. to make the eye more comfortable looking at a picture. Okay. Because yeah, you have a very monotone... We're going, to take, we're going to take an early break. You're watching It Down and Dirty Talking Art. I'm Debbie LaPrade, and we're talking with Mr. Jamie, famous photographer. You're watching it at WJZZ Cool Jazz TV. Please like, share, subscribe. Please, any comments. Uh, come on, everybody. Put a comment out there. And uh, please just watch us and just check us out. Okay, we're going to go back to the conversation. <laughs> Yeah. So we could also bring up another. Yeah, bring up another photo if you don't photo. mind. Now this is an interesting. Where I am doing a lot of work in in connecting us to our environment. Mm -hmm. um, the Detroit River International Wildlife Refuge. Right. I'm shooting there. We've done things there. They can use pictures to kind of teach people about the environment and right. our connection to oh, environment yeah. and how oh, important yeah. it is. And the interesting thing is... That we, is a beautiful photo. Now there, I'm using, talk about using light, that's actually backlit because the flower and the monarch butterfly mm -hmm. is translucent. What do you mean translucent? Meaning light will pass through it. Okay. So it almost makes a glow. Right. Now the sun was off to the side a little bit. Behind it, and, and a little bit to the side, wow. the dark area right behind was just the neighbor's trees. This is actually just taken at somebody's backyard in Detroit. You're kidding. It looks no. like some mystical island that you found this beautiful flower with the monarch on it mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So to highlight that, and I got the right positioning, right. I knew I set it all up, waiting, but during, we're fortunate here because we're right on the on the migratory path of monarchs. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know that. And right in September, right, I don't have to wait long. There's one f butterfly after another. Really? So, so where was this taken in? This was in somebody's a private residence in her backyard. She does a beautiful job of gardening and wow, flowers. That's beautiful. And I like. I said this flower is like the color of a monarch butterfly. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. So we kind of took advantage. And so what would you do? Call the monarch up and say, you got to come land on yeah. this flower? <laughs> I said, you're the king. Monarch is the king, right? Right, right. 
So I actually, in that case, I put him on his pedestal. Okay, okay. If you, yeah. Okay. You, you know, people say you can't control a butterfly, but okay. you can control the position. Okay. I'm often finding the back, looking at the backgrounds, mm -hmm. and then putting my subject in it. Okay, okay. Um, I did one, my, my own son, when I was photographing with him once. Mm-hmm early on, because most of the time I wasn't, mm -hmm. he was probably out in San Francisco. Yeah. And it had a bird, I said, that pelican is going to fly right towards the Golden Gate Bridge, just like you flying the, the nest right. and going to San Francisco. Right. Because he was now working and living out there. Well, that bird that it flew right towards, how did you know it was going to fly there? <laughs> well, besides joking with him and saying yeah. that the pelican was more cooperative than he ever was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, it was because that there were no people in that direction. Okay. And it was into the wind. You start learning things about your subjects. Okay. Birds like to take off into the wind. I didn't know that. And land into the wind. Well, they land, what do you mean, into the wind? If the wind is... So they'll go right into the wind. So okay. you want... Um, if you want them to come, a lot of times we want to, to have them facing you when you take the picture. Right. So you have the wind at your back, so they're coming into the wind. Interesting. They'll tend to come that way. Okay. And a lot, now one of the things I do very differently for birds mm -hmm. and Eat butterflies, <laughs> people, a lot of bird photographers will tell you, you want the sun at your back. Mm -hmm. You want the wind at your back. Mm -hmm. I tend not to. Now why is that? Because maybe my hit rate isn't as good. Things are a little off because it's harder to get the light. Mm -hmm. But when it is, things glow a little bit better. I get a little more artistic oh, so response. More of like the, like so the one of the other light. pictures, I think there is some blue heron. I did a whole series of okay. blue herons okay. building their nest. All right, see if we have the blue heron photo. I'm not sure if I put that up, if I sent that to you guys. I think I did. We can maybe get that up. Oh, he's looking for it. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, we got the fireworks. I might have not sent it to him. I'm not sure. No. Okay. That's right. We can keep talking. But, yeah, I try to send them all of them, but I might not have. So, no big deal. That's all right. Yeah, that's okay. We can keep You can put checking. anything up. Yeah. But I had them positioned, mm -hmm. or I positioned myself. Where they built their nest, I had no choice. Okay. They didn't discuss it with me. Oh, okay. They didn't call you up and say, hey, we're putting a little but nest. But I did learn by watching them mm -hmm. and observing where that male kept getting his twigs, mm -hmm. where he wanted to go and how he'd come back. So I positioned myself, here's where he's likely to come so back. So did they, when you were photographing, how close were you to them? Were you, were oh, you I don't like to get too close. I use a very okay. long lens because okay. I don't want to interfere. Okay, okay. So I was probably um, 75 yards away. Okay. So you're a bit of ways, but you got your camera. But you, can... you have a, I have a... Now, is that heavy? It's what? sort of, it, you know, for some people, I'm kind of used to it. I actually work out to hold the camera. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I had surgery last year and had to go to physical therapy, uh -huh. but I was lower body. But I was carrying a six or eight pound weight all the time. Oh, okay. And they so joked, why sure... are you doing that? And I said, well, that's my camera. Ah. So your camera weighs about six or eight pounds? Um, yeah, it depends which lens. It could be more. Really? But it's pretty heavy. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that's um, got some weight there. So I had no idea. I joke. I need bigger glass and bigger lenses so mm -hmm. I, because I don't have time to get in the gym. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. So you just kind of, um, wow. But cameras are getting lighter. Mm -hmm. This is a DSLR. A lot of where, where things are going now is right. mirrorless. And what does that mean? Instead of a single lens reflex, because there was a mirror that would reflect and you could see what the lens was seeing. Okay. Now, there is no mirror to flip up and down. So why is that? So it's, it's a, the cameras are getting more computerized. Let's oh, put okay. it that so way. So they're getting more of the data. Not just the data capturing, but how to set things and even electronic viewfinder instead of an optical viewfinder and so seeing what is it, an optical, optical you're just seeing whatever is there right 
you're looking right through your lens. So right. if you have a long lens, you can see the electronic, but you don't see what the picture is going to look like. You when see, you're looking in, you don't see. You see it based based on the daylight at that time, or the the ambient light we call okay. it. Um, then you do your camera settings, but that's not really going to change that. No, what look. are camera studies? Camera settings is oh, like settings, the speed, the speed, the shutter speed, right. the aperture, how big it open, or the the ISO. You've got to explain both of those because the don't ISO know is the sensitivity of your um, sensor that captures that data. Okay. Used to be we had to change films. We had what's oh, ASA, and you'd have more sensitive film or less sensitive film, and you didn't do it. You did the whole roll was basically the same. Right. There were days I would actually roll the film half back in, switch film, put it back, and have to remember where it was oh and God. click those off. How did you roll the film without it getting, you know... Well, you just had to remember, you know, mark it down, and you can roll it just like you'd Oh, you can roll it inside the camera. In the camera. Oh, okay, because I know if you open it, you roll it. Yeah. yeah. So you'd have to kind of roll it back into the cartridge. Okay. And such, That's but now much of a, you don't know what the heck you're doing. We have the ISO. Mm -hmm. uh, we can just make a quick setting. Mm -hmm. Then you check your shutter speed and your aperture, how big or close you know, down the aperture. The aperture is the opening. How much light is getting in at a time? Okay, is it depends on how big the picture is, or is that just the it? Lower? No, it has nothing to do with the size of the picture. It has to do with how much light can get in. Oh, okay. So. Okay. If this was all dark in here, right, and we open the door just a little bit, you some little light bit may light come, in, come in, right. But if you open the door all the way up, a lot more light comes in. Okay. So how much light is read by that sensor, is part of your exposure. Oh, so it's all in the camera. And those three, so it's all in the camera, but if the new cameras, mm -hmm. you have an electronic viewfinder, so when you're looking at that. You don't see the same thing all the time. You, as you change your settings, right. you can actually see what the picture is going to look like in that That's viewfinder. That's pretty interesting. You're not really looking at what you're seeing in front of you. That would make me crazy. I'm so, sure you, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been crazy for a long time. Yeah. But so that's, how many years have you been photographing? I mean, well, like, since like I was... doing this kind of photograph. Well, about 12 years ago, I got a neuropathy and had to stop doing surgery. Mm-hmm. So I have like numbness in my fingers. Okay. And that's not very good for surgery. No, I don't think so, yeah. Um, so in trying to decide what, now what do I do? Yeah. And my kids said, whatever you do, don't sit on the couch. And yeah. I said, you don't know me very well, do you? <laughs> I literally w went up that afternoon to a nature area near us because mm -hmm. I like getting in nature. I still do a lot. So what is your favorite thing to shoot? It varies. Okay. I mean, whatever's in front of my camera. Okay. Probably the most important thing I do is respect whatever's in front of my camera. Okay. Even if it's not my, doesn't matter if it's a favorite or not favorite. Mm -hmm. If I'm shooting an event, that's my favorite thing. I mean, I just say, I'm respecting that person that's there. Okay, I like that. I'm respecting the butterfly the plant, the flower, whatever it is, give it all due respect and bring out the beauty and the positive aspects of that subject. That's cool. What is the most hardest thing you've ever taken a photograph of that you would say? Well, the hardest, there's different ways to do that. It's yeah. how you take the picture is really not or, or that the most difficult. most challenging thing. I most challenging that. had, it's usually external things that cause it challenging, like climbing a mountain. Mm -hmm. um, I joke that 20 pound camera. <laughs> last, last fall, um, when Jill Biden was in town mm -hmm. and taking her pictures, but I had, because of COVID and everything else, it involved background checks. Right, oh yeah. It I involved, know you know, yeah. the security checks, yeah. all that. Vaccination, testing. Right. right. But I'm talking about the physical photograph, you know, like when you're actually taking a photograph. Um, I guess it's it's due to extreme lighting situations, which okay. generally would be the most difficult. Okay. Um, at this point, I have quite a bit of experience. Mm -hmm. 
Somebody asked me the other day about, and they asked me what I was doing today, what I was shooting. And I said, no, I'm just out for get, getting some practice. Okay. I said, practice? You never shoot a bad shot. And I said, I do. I just never show you the bad ones. Ah, okay. <laughs> but okay. those are the most important. Why is that? Because those are the ones I learned the most from. Okay. Like those challenging things and how to handle those challenging. I literally set, spend more time sometimes sometimes studying my bad photos. Okay, that's interesting. That didn't work. That's really I love a challenge. Mm -hmm. That's why I like, you know, that I was in the collaboration show. Right, right. Collaborating right. with other artists. Right. I learned from that right. to help my photography. That's very cool. In fact, for the first time, I was kind of stimulated. For the first time in 40 years, mm -hmm. I actually ended up doing a painting. Oh, really? Okay. I did an acrylic, acrylic on canvas. Uh -huh. Kind of inspired me. But it allows me, it's kind of like cross-training. When you go in a gym, you do different exercises. Right. right. I'll use different things, printmaking, painting, sculpture, and then how do I use that in my photography? That's interesting. Wow. So it really helps. <coughs> I mean, you're very familiar with, with sculpture mm -hmm. and the ceramics and things. Right. And we was like, well, how does that help? How do you translate it to three-dimensional compared to a two-dimensional? Right. See, I see everything dimensional. Yeah, and so do that. I. Yeah. But that is why the sculpture helped me. I want that in my photography. I want to see a oh. third dimension. It's a two-dimensional image, okay. but I want to bring out the third dimension and show depth in the photos. That's, yeah, because your photography does show a lot of depth. You know, really the depth and something mm -hmm. like that. We're just going to take an early break. You're watching WJZZ Cool Jazz TV, the coolest station in the world. You are watching us on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook Live, uh, please comment, share, and like. I'm Debbie LaPratt, the artist, and we have Mr. Jamie, the great photographer. If you guys want to put up one of those other photos, this one is really spectacular. Mm -hmm. I think it was the... Uh, yes. So this is another example. This is obviously fireworks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but what I like to do, to add a little more pizzazz, uh -huh. not that fireworks really need it, but by shooting across the river mm -hmm. and getting that Reflection. Oh, God, yeah, the reflection is what's, it's fantastic. It, it just is what allows, that's what I was saying right. about reflection or shadows or backlighting right. or right. getting different things using that. No, is this um, the Detroit fireworks? No, actually, this is one of my favorite fireworks is actually Bay City. Oh, really? I've never been to Bay City. My favorite is Detroit. Um, I get right on the water and I can see the barges. That is the mm -hmm. only way to watch the Detroit fireworks, people, is mm -hmm. you get down there like at 5.30 or 6 and you get right in front of that fence and you guard your spot and, oh, it's just... But the advantage, the advantage of Bay City, mm -hmm. from a photographic standpoint, they're longer. They're longer? Yep. How long are they? Um, I think Detroit's about 30 minutes. These mm -hmm. are like 45. Yeah. 45. Oh, really? I think ours used 50. to be 45. And I think because they sometimes use it, at least they were doing this. And I don't know if they still are, but they were using it after um, the 4th of July. It was kind of one of the last fireworks to go. Okay. But people that use their fireworks, mm -hmm. the company would actually demonstrate new things or they'd use, they'd get rid of old things. They're in the wow. area. So they would actually have more of a show. Oh, so is that where they make the fireworks? Or they yeah, they. Okay. I think there's a factory somewhere near there. That's so I'm cool. told. I don't know specifically, but... Right. And they said, in fact, a few years ago, I was told, you should go up there because you get more time. So I was. I took a, did a workshop. I mm. teach a lot in photography. So we had a group up there, and that would be easier to work one-on-one -on -one with the different photographers oh, if we have a little bit more time. Neat. Neat. And that's probably a, the biggest thing, but I can also, we know where the water is. Right. You guys want to put that photo back up? That was really a pretty cool photo. Hold on there. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Sorry, guys. Thank you. It's a really... Uh... So it's knowing how to time. Of course, you're shooting this all on a tripod. Oh, okay. Yeah. When you're shooting all the right. fireworks. Right. Why is that? Because it actually is the time. That's probably... I would say a 10-second exposure. Really? I can't 
hold right, something 10 are, seconds, yeah. you're going to move all over. Wow. So you have a tripod, you open the shutter mm -hmm. and kind of get an idea. You sometimes hear that boom mm -hmm. and then the, a couple up. seconds yes. later you see yes. it. So you hear that boom, then you open your shutter and then it, you get the burst. Wow. Okay. And, and what, what is causing those trails mm -hmm. is the time. So you're actually shooting that light spreading out. Oh, wow. That's Our fun. mind does that for us. Yes. But in yes. a camera, it doesn't do that. So you have to kind of help it by using a very slow shutter speed. All right. That's very cool. That's very, very cool. Thanks, so, guys. So I don't know what other pictures did we have up there? I don't know there? if we got anything else. I don't Is that know it? how many I downloaded. I think that was it, you know. Okay. Yeah. So that's but, really cool. Yeah. So it's... A lot of times it's seeing what's there. Right. Uh, right. Some of my students tease me a little bit because uh -huh. I say, you got to be careful. I, I say, shoot first, ask questions later. No, why is that? And now I have to, that's only with the camera. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but no, the right. reason is you see something you like. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead and take a shot because okay. we're digital. We, can, we have plenty of room. Um, it's not like you're, a 36 exposure roll of film. Right. So you take that. Now you, the questions you ask, what is it that I really like? Or what's distracting from what I like? Or mm -hmm. how a better angle? I love taking different angles. Mm -hmm. I may get very low. I did a, I conducted a walk for Earth Day mm -hmm. on Belle Isle just this last weekend. And one of the women just had a cell phone. And she... I said, that's fine. It doesn't matter. I never teach the, the camera. I only teach the photographer. That's, yeah, that's what you said. That's pretty interesting. And I said, the advantage of that, you could do something. And they had in the Ulof, Udolf Gardens. Well, where is that at? It's right at Belle Isle. It's, okay. it's new. It, this is only the second growing season, really. Okay. It's, and where is it at in it's, Belle Isle? It's right in front of the uh, Nancy Brown Carillon. Was that that statue? That, that Carillon. That yes, with the, yes. The belt. Anyway, okay. it's and not far from the conservatory. Okay. Conservatory and the gardens are there, and then across the street. Oh, okay. Yes. And this yes. is, um, he is a world-class garden designer. Oh, wow. And did a garden for us on Belle Isle. That's so cool. I know this and they did all kinds of special things. They Because of the flooding we've had, mm -hmm. and he elevated it like four feet or something. And right. But it's really developing nicely. Right. So I will go and shoot that. There's a new sculpture on Belle Isle too. Yes, yeah. and I have. I should have brought the picture of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. They already like it now. I'm questioned on that. That in, is it. What's interesting about that sculpture? <clears throat> well, first of all, it's the beginning of a trail that's going to spend two thousand mile trail through yes, Michigan. I heard about that. Yes, I think that's going to be. But so also, fun. a quarter mile from that is the lighthouse. Yes. That lighthouse is one of a kind. Yes, it was not yes. only designed by Albert Kahn, yes. but it is the only marble lighthouse I, I in the world. I do know that. I do know that. Well, people take it, and they, they're they taking that new sculpture, and they can't take the lighthouse with it. I, on the other hand, had the lighthouse looking like it was right Neat. behind it. Okay. But in order to do that, I used a very long lens. Mm -hmm. It causes compression. So these are the technical issues. I wanted to bring that a quarter mile away lighthouse right up next to it oh, so we could cool. see it with it. Wow, that's And there's cool. like an opening through the, uh, this new sculpture. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and I apologize, it's the Nolan Brothers, is it? I don't remember. Uh, I Nor know it's got a, yeah, it's like a circular. I apologize. I shouldn't know that. Two brothers uh -huh. here in Detroit that do, did the sculpture. Beautiful piece. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. How big is it? Oh, it's quite big. I mean, you can walk right underneath it. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah, it's it's probably 15 feet high. Oh, it is that big. Okay. And But there's a big opening in the center. Yes, there is. So looking at that, I filled that opening. Not filled it, but I brought that lighthouse almost right up into that by using a very long lens. If mm -hmm. you use a wide-angle lens, a lot of people would get closer to the sculpture. Yes. And... A wide angle lens makes that lighthouse look further away. Ah. So how did so you bring I went it across close? the street uh -huh. away from it. So the 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 ratio between me and the and the 
sculpture mm -hmm. was not as dramatic as the ratio between me and the lighthouse. So that means if you're, you're following that closer to the sculpture, you're closer to the sculpture. So it's always going to look bigger. Right. But let's say you're 50 feet from the sculpture. Yes. And you're, um, I don't know, 600 feet from the. Okay. From the the thing, so the different the ratio between 50 feet and 600 mm -hmm. is not as much. But I was maybe like 100 feet away. Still, the proportion of 100 to 600 is much smaller. Mm -hmm. So the size looks more similar. You're not, that's, that's but with a large lens. Right. That would have been a cool photo to bring in. Um, yeah, they liked that. I've gotten a lot of, how did you do that? Yeah. So it's you knowing your lenses, knowing the technology and using it. It, it allows me to use, I've been always, even when I was young, I was accused of being right-brained and left-brained. Mm -hmm. A lot of artists. Or just the one brain. Yeah, one, know and that. a lot of scientists are the other. Yep. I kind of go back and forth. Well, now we know. They thought then you were one or the other. Mm -hmm. That's not true. We are all both. Okay. But we emphasize more one on side. The other side. That's I tend to use. And that's why I, my right. art became much more using technology and okay. artistic design. So you're able design. to put it all together and stuff like that. That is really cool. That is really so, cool. Yeah, yeah, it's a... A different approach, mm -hmm. and then when I realized this, these digital cameras, this is like medical imaging. Oh, okay. You know, because I had already studied medical imaging. Okay. Back in the seventies. Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, you know, so people, oh, so you're Doctor Feldman now? I said, well, I'm still using some of those same techniques. Right. So you got. And I am Doctor Feldman, but. Right. Right. So. We're going to be uh, tying it up in a few minutes, so we got about four minutes, three minutes. So tell us really great positive note, something really positive that, you know, you can share with people or something. Well, the positive thing is, and I'll start with the Detroit area. Mm -hmm. And even during the pandemic when mm -hmm. people weren't getting around, there was so much happening in Detroit to photograph. There's so oh. many opportunities. Right. Even the artwork, since we're talking down and right. dirty art, all the murals in Detroit. Detroit okay. is now considered one of the top mural cities in the country. I didn't know that. That's really cool. And my, so when nobody was around, I go out take there pictures. Doing murals, yeah. In fact, internationally, my f photos went literally around the world. That's so cool. And I became, I was actually my. They nicknamed somebody nicknamed me the Motown mural guy. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So but cool. I take pictures of the beauty of Detroit. Mm -hmm. I always, even when there was like the like the train station. Yep. Ten years ago, twelve years ago, I have a picture. Everyone was trying to make it look old and a, a negative symbol of Detroit's decline. Mm -hmm. I made it look positive. That's really cool. I had hope for this. Yep. Now it's coming true. Yeah. So I tried to make That's my cool. favorite thing was people would look at this stuff. That's Detroit? <laughs> I yeah. said, yeah, there's a lot of beauty here. But I also connect with people. Mm -hmm. We now know how important every individual is mm -hmm. because these menial jobs now are essential workers. That's right. Wonder. But I also connect with our environment and how important that is oh, and gosh, how yeah. the You're water. Keep, yeah. keep, so, so what's next? I have a second. So, so now... Um, a meeting next week. Actually, we're going to be doing more with the, uh, hopefully, with the Belle Isle mm -hmm. uh, Conservancy. That'll be very cool. Um, I'm already planning. We have some, uh, actually, through church groups and youth groups, mm -hmm. getting some of the kids out into nature. That's really cool. That's that's. that's you know, they're too urban bound. Yeah. Let's see yeah. what you know, there's another world out here. Right. Right. Um, I've given some walks with. The park ranger, who's a naturalist and environmentalist, in mm -hmm. at the Detroit River International Wildlife Refuge, mm -hmm. and it's fun. We do it all tag team. That's he nice. goes. I have my camera, and he has his binoculars. Oh, that's neat. So here's what that bird is. Here's the activity. Here's he can right. fill us in on all the, the connection the with the, what's happening cool. in nature. That's very so these cool. are the things that are are kind of fun. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but it's also, so I, I like in my photography to tell a more important story. I like that. That's very cool. So you tell your story through your work. I mm -hmm. like that. And then how do they find you at? Um, well, um, Instagram is probably pretty easy at DBA Jamie. Okay. Like doing DBA Jamie. Do, DBA, like doing business as Jamie. Oh, okay. Hello. But of course, DBA is also my Daniel, Benjamin, and Allison, my three kids. Okay. Um, okay. I like so, DBA. So DBA. Jamie. That's easy to remember. Yeah. Um, so we're doing business as Jamie. That's very cool. Um, I'm on Facebook. Okay. And Feldman Images. I have a, a separate photo site on okay. Facebook for okay. Feldman Images. All right. Um, I don't use website much because a lot of clients and things i will custom i do such a variety of work right most people don't want to see the surgical stuff right no i don't think anybody i wouldn't want but to see here's the architect stuff. here's what you're doing like I, but i'll do nature stuff okay. i'll do let's say i'm shooting events mm -hmm. so i'll send them a gallery i like that that customizes the type of thing they're looking for that's right so dba Jamie, Jamie on, on Instagram. Instagram, and people can message me through that through that messenger up the there messenger and stuff on like that. Instagram, so. and that's probably the easiest. But yeah. Jamie Feldman on. Can you spell your last name? F as in Frank. Uh huh. E L D M A N. Okay. And that's on Facebook. Okay. Or Feldman Images Feldman on Facebook. Images. That's very cool. But I'm also connected. I also teach with several. Um, Large photography groups, mm -hmm. Great Lakes Photo Adventures, well, Michigan cool. Photo Adventures, and more na nationally, the uh, National Photography Workshops. Oh, that's very cool. So I'm one of the principal photographers and instructors for those. Do you like teaching the younger kids or the uh, or everybody? Everybody. That's I love cool. photography. I do a lot so some of the younger kids but i have a lot that are getting especially getting close to retirement mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. want to travel so mm -hmm. they want to take better pictures so we'll that's show so them how to do it cool. that is so cool that is so cool that's i like that you know it's really interesting because i know a little bit about x-ray but not nothing like you do but i mean it's just you know how you be able to incorporate everything putting it together or stuff like that I and it, putting so. it together i'm going to be collaborating more i have several artists yes 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 um, yes and we're going to be collaborating on different projects mm -hmm. i think it's fun uh i support very strongly and i'll call it marginalized groups some mm -hmm. artists need help but it could be blacks it could be lgbtq mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm photo the uh one of the lead photographers for uh, Motor City Pride oh, Festival okay. every That's year. Cool. Yeah, I shoot uh, the lead photographer for Menor in the D downtown, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I put things together. So big public events, mm -hmm. but I do small events. I do That's very cool. all kinds of things. That's very very cool. But we're still on. We got about another minute. So um, what? what uh, so, what are you going to be taking taking any photographs tomorrow or next week or this weekend? Tomorrow, I'm going to be doing. They have actually a discussion of the new that's, opera that's coming up. That's with right. And that Malcolm opera. X. Yes. I don't remember the exact name. I mean, it's yeah. called X or something, but it's about that's Malcolm right. X. It'll be at the Opera House. And this is not at the actually. It's actually at the. Um, well, it, the, the the thing will be the play. The the, the, the opera, opera will be at, at the, the Opera House. house. Yes. But the artistic director and the composer and stuff they're doing, it's more a discussion tomorrow mm -hmm. that will be at the um, BCTC, the Bethel Community Transformation Center. On Woodward Avenue. On Woodward Avenue. Yes. Uh, it's roughly 8400 mm -hmm. Woodward. Um, and that is at what time? And that's the one with the big pillars in front. That's, right. Uh, I believe that's... Seven o'clock or something. I don't. Okay. All right. We'll figure it I out. I don't remember, but it's yeah. um. But we'll. I might put it up on my thing, but that's co-sponsored event, mm -hmm. and that's kind of fun. That's tomorrow. Okay. Um. Cool. We're gonna be out at Kensington. Okay. This weekend. All right. And doing all kinds of things. We've got several events. I I do shoot for a lot of churches and synagogues and mosques. That's very and things. cool. Very cool. So there's a lot of some, not necessarily religious, but through right, right. some holidays and different things right, next right, right. week. So I don't know if we're still on. 
Are we still on, guys? I still see the green light. But um, I just want to thank everybody for watching tonight. WJZZ Cool Jazz TV, the coolest station in the world. Uh, you are getting watching Get Down and Dirty Talking Art with Debbie LaPrat and our wonderful photographer, Mr. Jamie. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Okay. We did it. I hope I didn't confuse too no, many people. No, no. It was really good. Thank you. It was really a good um, thing, you know.